I want to draw an association between money and people's values. Values are what we find as important and naturally whatever we value we gravitate towards it. So I want to find out what is the relationship first in what we have financially and our values. Because there is a core relationship between those two things. If we value money, our behavior will gravitate towards it. Because basically the point is that whatever you value, you will gravitate towards it. And and your life will be built around it and it will manifest within your life. So ordinarily in life, there is a distinction between what we think we want or with what we think we value or what we think is our, should be our priority and what is actually our priority as manifested by our daily actions. This conversation is important because in as much as I have been talking to people about money, whether at work or in private conversations that I hold, I found out that there are some people who are interested in the subject of money and they are interested not because they themselves value money but people around them and people that they respect value money and they want to emulate them and they see those values as important because they respect those people they respect the, the values of the people that are around them because they see their lives and feel that they should also have what they have so there is a distinction between themselves what they themselves like and what they like which is outside themselves. Basically, values are what we find important. Naturally, whatever is important to us, we gravitate towards it. Your values determine what you perceive and how you perceive things and what you actually do. Because your perception of what is important uh, and what you actually see as important is driven by your values. The values that you have will actually give you the life that you have in the long term, obviously. Uh, perhaps in the short term, might not for example, in the case of children who are living with certain parents, they develop values that parents have. But th their lives themselves may not be determined by the values they acquire at that time. It's probably determined by what their parents. But in the long term, their values, when they leave the home of their parents, they will determine who they become and what they see as important. So whenever you look at things, everyone looks at things things through the filters of their values and selectively bias information according to the hierarchy of what they think is important in life. And there is also bias information according to what they think is not important. At the end of this, there's a relationship between the psychology of an individual and their perception of money or how they value money. Because that in the long term determines whether they have it or they don't have it. So every day we have a challenge of trying to live according to our values the things that are of highest priority to us. Every individual is unique in the sense that they have an order of priority that could be numbered from number one, say number one being the most important thing according to that individual. And then number two, number three, number four, up to whatever number. And the values are different as per individual. So if you have a wife, you probably find that what, you put, what she puts on number one is not probably exactly what you put on number one. That being important, you find Financial position is affected by your values in the long term. And how you were raised uh, obviously contributes to how you perceive things and how you understand things. Not surprising, not everyone values money the same. I'm trying to make a decision between what people want and what they actually value. So when you ask people who wants to be financially independent, everyone is willing to raise their hands. And who is actually there, you get very few. Meaning to say, there are many people who want to be financially independent, but they don't necessarily value financial independence. Basically, many people have unrealistic expectations and sometimes fantasies of what is important to them. You, can, you may actually think that everyone who says they want something, they actually are willing to work for it. Many people just say they want something, but they are not willing to work for it. Some people say that they have a goal. This is a new year. We are in January now. Uh, people will tell you my goal this year is to achieve this and that, but within a few months, they have forgotten about the goals. So that tells you about what they actually value because whatever you actually value, you will naturally gravitate to it without being supervised. You don't need someone to remind you what you value. What you value ordinarily drives you. As soon as you wake up, your values also wake up with you and they will help you make a decision. But obviously, values do change over time. But generally, they don't change from day to day. They change over a long period of time. It is important that we shouldn't copy anyone's value. Because the moment we start copying anyone's values and you try to live according to those values, 
who automatically become a copycat of that person or that system and you obviously become very unhappy because you can never become happy doing what someone else values. You can never become the best of you if you are following the values of other people. The values of other people might not be bad. They are not aligned to your values. You can never become the best copycat, but you are the best in executing your own values. So set your values properly and do whatever it takes to follow through your values. What are these values we are talking about? Can we be a bit more specific. So, for example, the first value a person might have is financial stability. And the second might be family. The third might be good health. And the fourth might be entertainment. If your highest value is having financial stability or financial independence, a person who has financial independence as their first value will look for money. Every time they wake up, they are looking at opportunities to find money. Because anything that relates to money, to raising money, creating a business, a funding, all those things. They understand. They read those things. They talk about it every time. Whenever they're talking about that, but the same person, if he meets a person whose value is about soccer, the person who talks about soccer, who thinks soccer is important as a way of entertaining the, the crowd, every time they wake up, they want to know where the soccer ball is. Where can I go and practice today? Where can I go and meet other colleagues of a similar mind? If these two meet together, they will be bored with each other because they live according to different different sets of priorities. Their values are not the same. But this is not to say that the, the values of the other are wrong. But naturally, there is a tendency by people to look down upon the other. So the guy who is good in sport will probably look down to the guy who is always talking about money. And the guy who is always talking about money will always probably look down upon the guy who is talking about soccer all the time. He says, he's always talking about soccer. When does he sit down to think about money and keep the money that he's getting? The values influence who we are. As soon as we are in the mode or uh, talking about our own values. We feel ourselves. So why is it important to talk about values when it comes to money? Money has a very strong relationship with values. Everyone has values. And values are closely related to money in the sense that once we are aligned with our values, we are the most intelligent and the best that we can be in that sort, in that area. It energizes us. We are more intelligent when we are working according to our highest priorities. We are more energetic because at the end of this day, there's a relationship between your values and how you commercialize and harness your energy to translate that energy into financial terms. Everyone has energy at the end of the day. And this energy, we tend to uh, suppress our own energy that we have, thinking that it is not commercially viable. And we attracted to the energy that we see other people having. Whatever we value, we put on the pedestal. It drives our life. It manifests easily in our conversation. And the more we talk about it, the more we become closer to it and we gravitate our lives to it once we identify that thing. So the most important thing is to identify what do you value most? What is on your number one? If you are a family man, what is on number one for you? Sometimes it's not really business. Sometimes it's it's not really a job. Sometimes it's your family. There is nothing wrong with that. Having a different ranking of priorities in your life is absolutely not wrong at all. It's just that once you know that, you then need to get assistance to commercialize what you can do best. How you can earn money from what you know best. You can say, I want to do a business, but if it's not business, it will prove itself that business will be a burden for you and you yourself will be an unhappy person every time you are doing that business. The other thing you can actually see is for example, I've noticed some people spend a lot of money on housing. They rent houses. I have nothing against uh, renting houses. But if you look at the proportion of what you spend on a house, and if you think you are spending too much money as a proportion to what you are earning, it means you probably value family and safety a lot. Uh, there's nothing wrong uh, with spending a lot of money. It's, it's not wrong. It's just that it is what you value. That is what it is. Consequently, if earning money is your second priority, it would reflect also in how much you get of it. Or if earning money is your third priority. It will also reflect on how much of it you get. So if housing and safety is important, that would consume a higher proportion of your budget. So consequently, how you invest will be reflected by your priorities. Everyone rents a house or you, some people buy, some people rent. But whatever the case is, the proportion of money that you spend on 
either rented or a mortgage has a bearing on how you think about your family and yourself. So the, the higher you invest there, it means you are reducing money for, for the other budgets. Within yourself, you know what is important. Your conscience will tell you who really you are. So once we identify those uh, priorities, we need to structure. The second thing, we need to structure our lives according to our priorities. And then thirdly, once we identify what we value, we need to serve as many people as possible with the gift that we have. Those people who will compensate us financially because, because it is saving that solves problems. If we have a gift that serves people, people will be willing to pay for it. And finally, the most important thing is, is determining how good you are in what you are doing and then living according